they can, can see you yeah they can see me and they can they can also listen to me yes yes okay very good so how many do you expect this evening <laughs> that's what i told we are having close to 2000 registrations let us see how yes. many turn up yeah yeah so now you can guess why this corona count is so high in india <laughs> yeah <laughs> Anyway, it is a huge population, so it is your effort that uh, so many people are interested. This topic is not very common. Yeah, that's why it actually it is the need of the hour, so that's why people are liking it. And a uh, lot of uh, positive feedback we got that yes, this type of webinar should be there. And that too from uh, uh, what you can say, expert like you. So that's why this much. Uh, I don't, I, I yeah. don't know whether I'm an expert or not, but uh, but I have, I have some experience that I can tell. And sir, well, we... Puni, just one point. Uh, on my screen, I'm uh, seeing one window with W. So can you can you? Yeah, that is me. That is okay. me. So, so can I just have... little, little little bit shifting? Okay, that's good. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so do you have any question? Yeah, so because there, there is some issues with joining people, so they have requested me to Facebook live it. So we will be making this session live on the IEEE Bangalore section Facebook page as well. So that okay. uh, uh, audience are more and uh, they suppose anybody is having problem in joining this WebEx, they can use Facebook and they can see your presentation and okay. uh, Okay, yeah. no problem. So I'm I'm always available. It is evening, so you can take time. Yeah. So you are live now on IEEE Bangalore section Facebook page as well. Very good. And along with this Webex. So should I keep my screen like this? Is it good? Yeah, yeah, it is good. Okay. The screen is not idle. It is active. Somebody is doing something. Uh, I... it's on on the screen. On the screen, can you see one gentleman is trying to type? Yes, yes, we are seeing. Yeah, yeah. So it is active. Okay, so you let me know when you are free or ready to talk. We will wait for another two three minutes and then we will start. Sir, already we are close sure. to four hundred sure, plus. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So you are able to see me, sir? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, now I can. Yes. yes. Just a minute. This window is. Yes. Now, Funid is visible. Good. Yes. Good. So, Good. sir, already we are having now 460 participants. We will wait for another 40. Once we reach 500 count, we will start. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very good.
Yes, sir. Now we have reached 500, and I think we are uh, just uh, past two minutes of six. So we will start our proceedings. So I would like to formally welcome you on behalf of IEEE Bangalore section that uh, despite your busy schedule, you have uh, given us time, and that too not one hour, which is usually we are taking for uh, other speakers. But you have been kind enough to graciously give us uh, more than two hours for this presentation, which is need of the hour. And uh, I know you are very, very famous and known person, but still uh, for the students, I would like to read your brief bio so that they all are aware that uh, with whom they are going to listen this art and challenges of writing and IEEE transaction paper. So friends, uh, we, who is a professor at Institute of Radio Physics and Electronics, University of Kolkata, India, formerly HAL Chair Professor at IIT Kharagpur. Presently, he is Abul Kalam Technology Innovation National Fellow. He received his B.Tech and M.Tech degrees from University of Calcutta in 1987 and 1989, respectively, and he started his career as an engineer in Web Telecommunication Industries Limited. After graduating with a Ph.D. in Microwave Engineering from Calcutta University, he joined the same university as an assistant professor in 1994. He has researched in developing microstrip and dielectric resonator antenna technologies, Defected ground structure, EGS integrated antenna in, uh, is one of the his major areas of contribution. He has published over 200 papers in top journals and conferences, along with a book on microstrip and printed antennas from VLA UK 2011. He developed wireless base station antennas for a North American company, which has been commercial product, namely Z1900, since 2007. Professor Guha is a fellow of IEEE, Indian AE, which is Indian National Academy of Engineering, the National Academy of Sciences, NASI, and West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology, WAST. He is a recipient of some noble award, uh, notable awards, which include IET Ramlal Wadhava Award, APS Rajmitra Travel Grant, URSI Young Scientist Award. He is now a vice president of West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology and commission B chair in the Indian National Committee of URSI. He served IEEE antennas and wireless propagation letter as associate editor from 2015 to 2019 and associate editor of IEEE transaction on antennas and propagation. He is a section editor of INAE letters. He has served IEEE Kolkata section as chair 2013 and 2014, IEEE APMTT Kolkata chapter as founding chair in 2004 and chair 2010-11. And then there are so long uh, brief. I think uh, sir is giving me a hint that I should stop at this point of time and uh, he wants to take the time for his presentation which is art and challenges of writing paper for IEEE transactions. So, sir, thank you very much again for joining us. And uh, just to give you a brief that uh, presently now we are having 650 participants who are eagerly waiting to hear you. Now the floor is yours. Please start, sir. Thank you, Puneet. So, uh, am I clearly audible from your end? Yes, yes. So hopefully uh, all of you, all the attendees of this uh, webinar today, so you can listen to me. Yes, sir. I'm very grateful to Bangalore section, especially to the organizers. So Puneet or Mishra is one of them. And uh, he has been after me for a long time so that this type of talk, particularly it is it is his demand that this type of talk is required for generation researchers. So uh, 
you don't consider it as a talk or kind of guideline or advice, no. There is no thumb rule. It is actually, what I'm going to present is actually my learning through my experience, through my journey for nearly last three decades. There are some interesting aspects and things that need to be considered during writing your journal paper. It is IEEE transactions does not mean that the stock is applicable to or the the content what I'm going to share with you is only for IEEE transactions. It is for any high impact journals. That means the journals of top repute or highest repute. Uh, problem? No, sir, video is okay. We are able to hear you loud and clear. Only thing your slide, you have changed the slides. Then it will work, right? No, yeah, your the slide is, is okay. not. Okay, the slide is not working. So, anyway, so let me check once. Yes, 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 yes. It is started working. Okay. Uh, but we are not able to see, sir, that slight change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So yeah. Uh, I, I thought it is not, so now it is working. It's perfect. Okay, okay. Well, so our starting point, friends, our starting points, starting point really is after you complete research or you are ready with your results for writing the paper. So one primary or basic condition that your contribution, your technical contribution, your technical results, that should be of that. That is the basic condition. Without this, you write for top journals that is not acceptable. So the quality of work, the content of the work, has to be very authentic original and what publishing that is the primary condition. so when we are ready with this i'm trying to share with you that we are writing for whom so it should be very clear from the very beginning about our mindset that we are writing for whom. So our session is not interactive, so I cannot listen to, oh, I, I cannot share your, sorry, I, I cannot get feedback from you or your thought, your mind. So it is only one-sided, so it is a bit boring from both sides. So you have made my video on, so at least you don't feel lonely. <laughs> okay, and also to the to my friends that you please listen up to the end. And definitely when I'll be talking, there may be several queries, questions, some thoughts in your mind you keep a note on your paper. I believe half of them are most Otherwise you can just check. What, Puneet? No, I, I think, I think. No. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. I'm, I will ask you one thing. Once it is over, so you will see most of your queries and questions are addressed. 
even after that, if you if you have some question, then you can you can or you can ask through through moderator, right? Am I right? Or the question will come to the screen. Your your audio is not working. Your audio is not working. Yeah, yeah, now it is okay. Yeah. Just in. Yeah, yeah. There is a Q and a window. If you have any questions, please type there. At the end of the presentation, I will take questions one by one, and Professor Guha will be answering them. Okay, that's good. Still waiting for monsoon, so Kolkata, Kolkata is very warm and humid. So anyway, <clears throat> so you should be very clear that you are writing for whom? There are three possibilities. That uh, am I writing for my reviewers? Am I writing for my readers? Or for myself, that means for yourself. So one thing is very clear that no, it is not definitely not for yourself. So you have two options. That is readers or reviewers. It is my experience that those who are not to experience the thing that it is definitely for readers. So no, you are not writing for readers because you'll have to cross the hurdle. That is, you'll have to face your reviewers. They, if they accept it, if they are happy and satisfied, then it will go to the reviewers. Sorry, to the readers. So when we are writing paper, we are writing for our reviewers. So now we need to see who are our reviewers. That means one is your contemporary group, that is your peer group, very senior expert. It is possible that very senior expert is your reviewer or very young researcher. Sometimes it happens. The researchers are of that category, postdocs, less experienced researchers or people, they are also your reviewers. So you cannot control, it is not in your hand. So our aim is to satisfy whatever be the group type of reviewer, We'll have to satisfy all of them. Do not worry. So, in a logical, systematic, careful service. Four are very, very basic requirements. I am telling you one thing. Many of Many of you already you have experience of working as reviewer. If you young people you don't have. Question is the reviewer when get time to review. Giving very quality time very very serious time to review most of them most of the time they either they're traveling or it is in their relaxed mood or they're flying or they're in the airport they just open the laptop or the hard copy just to look at and mark few points and mainly they try to find out the flaws 
negative points in the in the paper or in the manuscript. So that's why if you are not full, if you are not systematic, then it is very difficult to satisfy them because you don't know their mood, their mode of work, their location where they're doing this review. Full start. All of you, you should keep in mind all these points. You need to be prepared before you're going to start writing. <laughs> What's that? What normally I do? Organize the results. Suppose I work for a year or more than a year or few months. So all my important data, table, graphs, sketches, diagrams, everything, everything I consider as my writing resources. So I collate the all diagrams and all these graphs in, in in one place. Well, so you don't know. They will finally in the paper. So definitely they may not be in order, but as complete as possible document should be in your hand before you start. Why? Because I am going to going to tell you why. I personally prefer you get all these things to be printed, to be in the printed format. Because when you are looking at your documents, definitely some changes, some corrections will come to your mind. So you can mark it on the paper using different colors, using ink, pen, pencil, whatever you have. So the printed form is very useful for the correction. You can start and you should feel comfortable to start your story. Story, the term I'm using because paper writing is just not writing something in sequence. So it is not your list or preparation of list before going to market that I need these 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 items. I'll go and and purchase. Or it is it is not merely the statement that I have done this 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 work. This, this these are my results. So this is my conclusion. Paper should not be like this. A paper a complete view about this work. So first, after you have, you are ready with your results. So now you need to decide how to attack. That means from the very beginning, mind is very clear. So based on that, you have done this uh, investigation, experiments, and you have got your results. That is well and good. But in most of the cases, this is not the reality. So then you need to choose after you see the results. That is what is the novelty of the work and how you want to link with the the present crisis or present need need of technology the growth of technology the trend of technology so all these considerations you need to do and then you need to you should be very clear about this that how you want to attack the problem from the very beginning 
is clear about this that I need to address the problem or I need to put this problem to my peer group from this angle, then it will be acceptable that it is a good work and it is worth and we need it. So once you are ready with this, now you can start. So it is the it is the beginning before you start. So it is your preparatory stage. So all mental and practical works you need to be ready with this. Now you can start. So what to do at the beginning? I have asked many, many researchers that uh, what to do. So they tell us the first to write this, uh, what you have done, these results. Or someone says, I will write the introduction first. Someone says, no, introduction at first is not a word, so I will write introduction at the last. I will write the basic work first. Okay, so now let's see. So what is uh, ideal or what I do? I start from title. Because the title will actually guide you. And title is very significant, very, very significant to write a paper. When you write your title, you need to follow a few points. So do not use any loose term in the title because the reviewers always try to find out flaws. Since title is written in very, uh, very large font, so it is eye-catching always. So as reviewer, always we go through the title first and we try to find out whether the title is flawless or not. It's very important. So don't use any loose term which you cannot establish. Better to avoid the term new or novel. I have seen many times that these terms are not liked by others because Definitely your work is novel, definitely your work is new. So why should we write or repeat this term? Novel, the term novel is better to avoid in the whole text. You can use really novel if it is really novel. So that, that carries a different weight. So novel is very, very important and precise term. So always novel, novel, new, new, it is, it is not very a good idea to write. That is very important because I've experienced this, that uh, uh, your peer group first is attracted by the title. The abstract, forget about the whole paper. At least the abstract they can read, they have time. But the title is very important because this title gives the basic idea of the content of this work. So other people or the community will be attracted to read your paper. You always want that your paper is read by others and used by others for further development. Otherwise, there is no thing of doing research. If it is not used, or if it is, if it does not help others to improve the technology. So, I would say it is actually abstract of the abstract. Title is actually the abstract of the abstract. 
so it is important how accurately how nicely you can portray the the content of your work through few words in the title try to be within 20 words typically it should not be too long always it is recommended that it should be limited within 20 words i already mentioned the title ultimately guides your storyline and sequence of organization that means until you decide your mind that how you will put this whole work to the community you cannot write your title so once you write the title complete the title little bit editing and changing is possible always possible but the basic framework until it is done through title it is very difficult at least for me it's very difficult to write or go to the next step I'm giving you one example. I'm giving you probably two or three examples. So this is one. I hope everyone can read it. This is one title of my very age paper. New CAD model to calculate the resonant frequency of inverted microstrip circular patch antennas. You see, it is very simple and flat title but now with maturity if i write it if i rephrase this title definitely i will write this title in this format theoretical analysis to determine the operating frequency inverted circular patch having wide range of variable air gap and patch dimensions it means almost the uh, the whole work is described that what are what are already done inside so that full content abstract of the content is more or less given through this title we come to the next one Look at this title, a few words. The key words, a few words are, if you put in your title, that makes the whole story very, very clean and clear. I'm giving one more example. And highlighting few ideas, the few words you say. So with these words, you can make this full storyline in the paper complete. It is equally important to maintain its size very compact extra or additional word unnecessary unnecessary lengthy but we want it to be comprehensive example three creation of title so one of my co-authors I have uh, collected this from him. Probably he is also present today in this in this group. You just follow the date and and the changes. Super straight and sideable loaded design of Febripero cavity antenna for uniformly high gain characteristics over wide operating bandwidth.
March 29, March 19. versions have changed it so number of words is less but it is changed to advanced design and theory of febrifero cavity antenna for wideband operation with consistent high gain characteristics so now you look at this it is more comprehensive compact March to May, so after one month. Actually, the, the paper writing is going on, and time to time, that is, the days are the, are the indicative time, but I have edited it. Now you see, I have tried always to make it very compact, that is, that is short in nature, but complete. An advanced design and theory of febrifero cavity antenna offering wide bandwidth with consistent high gain. Twenty ninth June to twenty two July. So almost after one month. Advanced design of febrifero cavity antenna featuring consistently. Actually, words are very important when you are writing your title. Featuring consistently high gain over wide operating bandwidth. So very minor editing, but each time the editing is going to improve the sense. 11th August. Every pair of cavity antenna designed, that is advanced part has been removed with a new approach. This term is included. You see, after starting this writing, after, after one or two months, a new approach to achieve uniform high gain over the wide operating bandwidth. That means the focus is a little bit changed in the title. 31st August, that is the final. Febrifero cavity antenna designed with a new approach for, so two has been changed for uniform high gain over a wide operating bandwidth. So if you follow the nature of change, so always uh, I've tried to make it very concise and compact, but with important words or the focuses of the work. So this is published work, so nothing wrong with this. This paper was published probably in transaction. Well, so after title, what to be read? Of course, introduction of course introduction definitely you do believe it and when i have uh, discussed with my friends as uh, since senior researchers they all agreed that and someone uh, some some of the, some of the authors, they consider it not 60%, it is 80%. So introduction carries the, the, the main part of the work where it is the main the deciding factor that the paper is going to be accepted or rejected. Therefore, it is very important and I'm trying to address the the key things what we miss in writing in writing introduction or writing paper so so we focus on the problem and justify why your work is important for publication in most of the papers we forget we write many things what we have done what we have done so 
many narrations, words, but we forget in identifying is specifying that this is the problem and this we have solved and it is important for publication. The simple word and simple focus that is missing. Should not. Therefore, uh, I always recommend, I, I never do this thing, that the known, known thing, known facts, as the first one or two or three sentences, better not to use, because uh, the reviewers don't like this. So, the the basic uh, structure that I have already marked here starts from here. What to be written in introduction? Those who are following this, this uh, talk seriously, please try to follow this part. It's very important that what are the basic uh, focal areas? What is the template? First, you state the background. That is, you are working on this. Then, write the recent or state-of-the-art developments. Latest developments done. And then, directly address the issue. That many people, they have done this, but this part is the is the unaddressed problem or it is the lacuni or lacuni in earlier works. Therefore, I have tried to solve this problem. So, you need to establish that your investigation is important and it is important to resolve the issue and improve the technology. Very simple. So, if four or five points you cover in your introduction, then it is more than sufficient. When you are writing introduction, definitely we need to refer to other works. So better to avoid very old, too old reference or too many old reference. So you can you can understand that our intention is to focus on the contemporary works or significant works, especially the works in your field or in this in this proper area already done in last decade or last two decades. That is one hidden hidden factor that most of the reviewers will come from. This, this group or these authors may be your reviewer. So, their work, if it is relevant to do your study, so definitely every, everyone would appreciate if you refer to his work or his contribution. It is also another part that when we are writing paper, we try to indicate some flaws, some errors in previous work, something did not addressed, but strong criticism is not recommended. So avoid strong criticism of any previous work. Even it is rubbish, it is absolutely wrong, erroneous, still, your writing, your presentation should be should be elegant, should be more graceful, but you'll have to write it in a, in a decent way. At the same time, when you are claiming that your work is really good and very useful, but uh, the tall claim is better to be avoided. 
So if it is really done for the first time, if you're 100% sure, then you can write. Or you can write to the best of author's knowledge or to the best of our knowledge. This is being addressed for the first time. Not beyond that. So very tall claim is not is not recommended by anyone. So now in introduction, your role is to one is very, very robust storyteller. So you will tell the previous story, the lacunae, relevance of your work and establish your work is good. And that's why it is a story. Plus, you need to work as a, as a brilliant lawyer. That is, you are putting your case before someone with good reasoning. That is, proper scientific reasoning is very important. Therefore, check three apps. That is, when the introduction is written, it should be fair. Fatless, that is very important. Fatless means there should not be any repetition. There should not be any extra word, unnecessary word, unnecessary explanation. And even your paper is accepted, the reviewer will comment that it is too elaborate and uh, you need to reduce the length of the text, etc., etc. So why should you give this chance to tell? So make it very, very crispy. Only the necessary, but not too much, too much exaggerated or too much elaborate. That's why, so if you can maintain it, so automatically it will be very fascinating. So introduction is over. The introduction is over means your 60%, 70% load is covered. So work is done. Although physically, the lengthwise, the later part is more, but uh, it is easy to write. It is rather easier to write. So build up your story logically based on your studies, results, and scientific documents. So it is not too difficult because you have done your work. Just few points. So if your work contains theory, sometimes it happens. So it should be described carefully, but not elaborately. Sometimes it is very, very difficult to cut short, but uh, that is that is required. So referring to earlier works, you carefully cut short that part. Only the required equations you can keep. Unnecessary copying of equations from previous references or other works in your paper, it is not recommended. If something is developed by you, it is your own equation, you can go through. But still, be too elaborate because for paper it is not recommended. So avoid repetition of earlier work or known equations. It is not acceptable. Sections and subsections. Well, very important and it should be moderate should not be too too high that is too many too many sections too many subsections are not recommended so typically sections and subsections it is based on your judgment the journal you follow just follow the uh, published works and their style of writing. So typically three to four sections are more than sufficient. And 
sometimes subsections i i hardly prefer subsections because if it is not required better to avoid subsections but subsection sometimes required because it it helps your reader to track the the flow of the work that is required so just one example i am showing from my work that one section and under this section if i writing many things together then it is it may be difficult for a reader to decipher the which part is where so only in this this case if it is uh, one uh, complicated or multiple works together then you need to identify a b c d something like like this if the work is simple single single structure single antenna or single device then it may be avoided so it depends that uh, what's the requirement the so main body of this work needs few more things that is organization of results this is an art of organization of results same results i can give to 10 people 10 students and 10 people will organize or reorganize the results in their own ways so it is it depends on that uh, how do how do you look at this how do you how do you interpret this and what's your innovative mind how to handle these results it so all depends the so same results but presentations are different but a few few things are important to be followed that is very common that is flow of scientific approach and sequence. So whenever you present the results, that should come in sequence. And one common problem I have seen that most of the newcomers and new authors do when they when they write something, suddenly they are referring to figure three. That is, they have described something in figure three, but that figure three or that part is required when you are writing. Before you discuss figure one, you are writing something related to figure three. Not, that is not recommended. So, please follow the second sentence or second guideline. That is, do not discuss anything relating to figure five before discussing figure four. So if you are to mention something before in a, in a text, when you are discussing something relating to figure one, suddenly you cannot jump to figure five. So somehow you have to manage or add a figure, add something indicative, but cannot refer to figure five in the context of something much before figure five. Suppose you are writing something, something you have started writing your results. So always it will come in sequence and results will come as the works progress. That is your research results progress. The sequence should be like that. And no result, no result should appear abruptly. The context should be clearly revealed. Suddenly you think that I need to put this, it was a part of my study. Definitely you can do it. But the reason of discussing this and the context of discussing these results or putting this result, that should be clear from your end, that is author's end, and from it should be revealed to a reader. So that kind of abrupt behavior, abrupt appearance is not recommended. And it is also another important aspect which is not followed. 
That is, you need to explain all aspects of the furnished data. Furnished data means the two things. One is, uh, suppose in your in your paper, you have given eight figures. You need to write or a discussion when you are discussing the results. You need to write clearly about each figure. You cannot skip. At least two, three sentences you need to write. Sometimes maybe more. Even if the, the result is self-explanatory, it is clear to a reader, but still, you will have to write at least one or two sentences about this figure or data, whatever, whatever be this. I'm, I'm, figure is easy to understand. And also, in each figure, whatever discussed, all parameters, all aspects should be discussed under that. That means all data, those are furnished in that figure. When you are discussing this figure, everything should be discussed in a, in a very brief way. That is one art that should not be elaborate. So you'll have to touch, but in a very precise way. I already told that diagram, graph, treble, data are same, results are same, but their presentations may be different. So it varies from person to person. So that's why some tips. Never try to present any complicated diagram. That is, if you do this thing, then it is 100% sure that your paper will be rejected. Because no reviewer is giving time to understand in a complicated figure, and it is easy for him to write one sentence that this figure is not legible, so it is difficult to understand the diagram or understand the structure. Just one or two sentences, and he will write that I'm not recommending. It is rejected. That's all. It is, it is obvious. So it is very important, self-explanatory, simple diagram. If you need to explain in steps, you do it. If you need to give more space, give it but don't make things complicated. And secondly, all components, all parts, everything should be unambiguously leveled so that it is easily understandable. A reviewer will try to understand your work in a very uh, limited time. He's not giving much time. Even it is not a reviewer. Suppose it is published. A reader will not go through the every line of your text, but he or she is interested to find the results so the, the results are properly presented, it is easy for him or her to understand clearly. This is not related to graph or table, but uh, it is related to that I'm, I'm saying this. When you are giving some measured data, then you try to not try, it is our duty to give 
in that context describe the measurement technique the instrument used the standard of this instrument the make ear everything so that makes many things clear that what kind of results what accurate results you have you have got or uh, the fabrication tolerance because it is after all the scientific documents and once it is published it will remain forever even for 50 years after 50 years the new researchers will come and open and they will they will try to understand what you did actually regarding table i have some reservation because it compares absolutely numerical value so if it is really required to give some some kind of uh, uh, numerical value then only table is good otherwise graphical presentation is preferred because it gives some indication and visual representation too many tables are not very very good idea for uh, presenting your work or data so it is a combination of two table is more deterministic it is more conclusive so it is required for some comparison leveling of cards leveling of cards it is an another important aspect nowadays we are getting some colored picture but still if it is reproduced in black and white or if you take the printout in black and white that is grayscale printout then sometimes in the modern day many figures are useless we cannot understand if it is not printed in color so leveling of cards unambiguously it is it is one art and uh, if you can give more attention it is useful and i give very very serious uh, thought about this this caption figure caption each caption should be complete and comprehensive i may not go to text i may not go to details of the results but one particular figure is of my choice of my uh, my interest so definitely i'll go to the caption and i will try to figure out that what what it is and all the parameters and all related information dimension etc that should be completely given in the caption but if you are repeating something suppose you have given a list of parameters in figure 4 figure 5 6 actually follows the same device then you can write parameters as in figure 4 or parameters as in figure 2 but still you need to refer to what you actually mean or what kind of device or devices you are working or you are showing in your result or uh, the, the graphical format so what you are going to discuss so that completeness should be there hopefully you are laughing right so this is your abstract <clears throat> so when you complete introduction and the main part of the paper then we, we need to write two more things one is abstract and the other one is conclusion i prefer to write abstract first okay so what is abstract abstract is actually the muscle of the hero why because the hero may not be visible always if it is published in any transactions so it cannot download 
but you can read the abstract or in any journal the abstract is easily available to read so in your abstract you can write you can express the strength of your work so it actually shows the strength of your work so abstract is very important so it is just showing the muscle of the hero So it gives you limited space. Nowadays it is probably 200 words. So it is enough. 200 words is enough to write the abstract. Abstract means abstract. It is not to write, not for writing any elaborate thing. So appropriate words and phrasing are essential. So do not make anything elaborate. I already mentioned it. is actually advertisement of your product and uh, tell all of you that if you look at the advertisement in your television channels they're selling for selling their product for promoting their products getting time just few seconds 20 to 30 seconds time so within this time they're telling a complete story they convey a complete message about the product and that is the art so it is not that's that the 200 word is not sufficient actually within 100 110 words you can complete writing your abstract and that is the art so so when you are writing about your products so you just focus on your contribution introduction gives you scope to write in which context you have started the work something about the previous work but when you are writing the abstract it is always recommended to concentrate to write about your contribution only it should not be elaborate so just four points have been mentioned and those who are new you can you can you can follow it that is one or two sentences are the key aspects of the work then again one or two sentences will tell about the novelty of the work Remember, it is it should be properly textured. That is connected. Sentence one, sentence two, sentence three. But the, the focus changes. So key aspects, the novelty. Then indicate the technique you have used. If it is a new technique, it is a new approach, a new theory. If it is a new design. And what kind of experiments you have done? So all will come after that, after the novelty statement. And last sentence will tell you the state of your, that is last sentence, the achievements. And the achievement, that means what you have obtained finally, and how good it is with respect to others, that is also important and you need to write it quantitatively not qualitatively it is much improved no it is much improved it is highly improved it actually uh, does not mean anything so it has to be quantitative statement and two important points i have noted just below this one is Never use significantly improved or highly improved or much improved in your abstract. No. It is quantitative. If it is 2%, you tell about 2%. And no repetition of any item, any topic, any statement. In abstract, never repeat the same thing. 
because you it, it is the smartest part of your whole presentation so it is the advertisement of your product so why are you going to use the time or time slot or the space slot the space is given to you to optimize one with the uh, the best thing of your product of your paper within this limited space that's all conclusion that is one interesting part and some interesting observation better to avoid writing uh, abstract and conclusion in the same sitting i don't recommend anyone to write both together then then obviously you will do one mistake and what if you read the papers you will see the most of the papers you read the conclusion it is actually the repetition of the abstract i don't find any meaning of that type of conclusion but the conclusion is very important part it is given to you it is your freedom to write so don't repeat the content of the abstract in your conclusion conclusion it is my interpretation the conclusion means conclude with some special remarks it is your remarks which you did not get the scope in the whole body so now it is your playground during doing this work definitely you have something in your mind so you can put on record so you may address some some critical issues relating to your work and it is also known to all of us that in one work you cannot solve all problems so there may be some untouched part or some part you could not address due to your limitations so you can focus on this that these are the positive things which can be extended in the future or which you you could not due to this problem and lastly the work what you have done how important it is what is its future possibility or if it is it has some weakness that also honestly you can write because every technique drawback and drawback so honestly one researcher can write all this thing in 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 his conclusion his or her conclusion so nothing nothing wrong with that so it is your special remarks so not to repeat the abstract well so after conclusion is over <clears throat> so you can run to submit because you are waiting after after doing research you are waiting for that no so immediate action is not required so normally what i do i leave it for a week and even for a couple of weeks to read it carefully i read it several times for its final adjustment final tune and i read it from different uh, perspective different aspect apart from this if possible i give it to my co-authors my students even he or she is not the co-author of this paper but i i give it to them they read it find out if there if you see any any flaw it is logically weak something is wrong so so they are my first reviewers so they criticize it 
and I need to correct it again. And it is also also another concern that uh, in many countries we are not English speaking. So always uh, the, the proper English, the proper uh, grammatically correct, correct English sentences, there are a lot of flaws. In several countries I've seen this one. Our, our India is one of them. So we can take help from our uh, English experts, English teachers, English knowing friends, colleagues. Nothing wrong with that. So try to make it very, very professional. Well, then it is ready to submit. So once you submit, so half of the work is done. Half of the work is done. So now what to do? Well, I'm coming to the next part. I have some some special remarks. Particularly, it is I know that my talk is very boring to the experts and senior persons, and few are visible on the screen. It's very, very, very disappointing and boring. But for the new newcomers, young researchers, so for them, that read paper of original researchers in your own field. So it is not possible to develop the skill in one day just by following such a lecture or uh, similar similar type of article. No, it is a kind of practice. Extensively read papers of original researchers in your field. Read, follow and learn, read, follow and learn. That is the only way. And one day we'll see that your own style, one skill will be developed. And what I'm sharing with you today, it is not one global, global rule. It is the style what I follow, it is the format template, it is automatically built, so I'm sharing for your help. And you may break custom because uh, always don't follow the custom. If required, you can use some unconventional things. So one example I can tell you that normally we don't use step, use stable or exhaustive something in the introduction to establish your work, to justify your work. But one or two times I had to do it through extensive comparison that it is required and that's why we did it. So this type of requirement, if it is really required, so you can you can try, it's acceptable. And most important is the passion. I did not write it. The passion and patience, so both are required. If you have passion, the writing a paper is absolutely easy and exciting. So it is not a. Uh, not a very, very painful thing. Don't take it a painful thing. If you think it is painful, then you cannot write. You'll have to love for writing. And that will automatically develop if you practice. If you read and practice, read and practice. It is a kind of game to you. So try, definitely, definitely it is going to help you. We submitted paper, so now it is our <coughs> time to wait for reviewers' comment. That is a big suspense. What the reviewers are telling uh, on your paper. Okay. So after you receive reviewers' comments, definitely within two months, or in, if it is later, within one, 
you are expecting the, the review comments or decision on your paper will come. And don't get disappointed like this. Well, it may be rejected. That is the worst possible case, it is rejected. Nothing wrong with that. It is a part of game. So don't get disappointed. If it is rejected, either you accept the comment. That is, yes, your work is not of that standard. You have these, these, these flaws. So you'll have to work again. You'll have to improve again. So try to take it with right spirit. I have seen in my life that several, several reviewers are of outstanding quality, maturity, knowledge, and they have helped me a lot to learn new things, to do extra work, and to get new information. And that has uh, improved my, my papers, even my learning itself. So it happens. So it may be rejected, but you are getting better inputs for your future. So you can improve improve the quality, the following their comment, and there is always a chance to resubmit your work with proper reasoning, reply, and improvement of the quality of the work. Or if you think, if you think that, no, my, my work is okay, it is really good and and you don't accept the the criticism in in its in the sense they have rejected so there is a scope of writing a rebuttal that is you are not accepting the comments and showing the reason it is a peer review Right? So the reviewers are not your boss. They are not superior to you. It is a peer group. So if he or she writes paper, then you will review it. So it is by the peer group. So it is quite uh, possible and quite obvious. So don't take it so, so seriously. It is disappointing, but don't take, don't be upset. Okay. So there, there are scopes to write your rebuttal to the editor. Now, if the paper is recommended, if they recommend revision, then it is your party time that it is for major revision. They have, they have accepted my concept, they have accepted my work, but they, are, they have some clarification. It is the normal, normal case. Even after the revision, you can find after two, three rounds of revisions, the final paper is rejected. So all are possible. But I'm telling you that is the, the commonly happening things. So fine, so you are happy, but you need to read the comments at least three to four times very carefully. Why? Because you need to do some extra works. That is revision, preparing your reply to every comment, and that is, and that part is equally, that part is equally important and serious. And when you are reading these uh, comments, normally what happens, you will be disappointed or either you will be angry. Because, of course, the reviewers are going to criticize your work and all reviewers are not equally graceful. They, are, uh, they may use different types of words or terms that it not acceptable to you, but it is not under your control. So take it in a positive spirit that they are criticizing technically. 
So don't get disappointed. You need to write revisions. And that's why what is more important that keep your head cool. During revision, you should be more patient, more careful, and you need to enjoy your revision. I do. Sometimes it is it is very interesting that the comments are are peculiar comments, but it is the art to write uh, the reply to to the to the uh, reviewers. And if you are really expert in this field, you will feel that it is your scope to show your expertise, your authority through your reply. So automatically the reviewers will understand that you really you really understand this subject and it is under your full control. Okay? So what to do? So read the comment and revise your manuscript. So there is a trick what I follow. I parallelly write author's reply. So it is easy for me to keep track on both. That is, I am replying and at the same time I'm 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 going to revise. And any kind of change, any kind of addition. That is to be highlighted in the text using red. It is recommended. That means once your revision will go, there will be some red mark, red highlighted part, and that in, will indicate that you have you have made the changes over this. What you have deleted, you cannot show, but what you have changed, edited, or added, that can be marked in red. You need to address all points. You agree or disagree. That means all comments, all suggestions. If you agree, you do it. If you disagree, still you need to write your reply. But there are some, some rules that I'm going to describe within a minute. That's why I'm telling you the huge patience is required. Never do hurry in writing the revision. It, uh, sorry, if you feel tired, take a break. So during writing the revision, don't be hurry. Don't be impatient. Sometimes the reply is longer than the paper. But you will have to do it with patience and with passion. It is another uh, aspect what I prefer, I follow. That when I write, uh, the, when I respond to reviewer, I always address to editor in chief. I never write in the mode that thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. No. Because this, this gives me additional advantage, particularly if I disagree. So it is very difficult to write, I disagree with you. But if you address the editor in chief, you can easily write that, well, I have read it, but still I believe it is not like that, and I respectfully disagree with the reviewer. It looks decent. So I follow this mode of replying. Now question is how to handle. That is another very tricky part. If you do not agree with the reviewer or the reviewer is wrong or absolutely wrong, this is not unusual at all. It is, it's a very common case. So how do you handle this? So for the young, for very uh, new authors, it's a bit embarrassing. But with time, you will learn how to address it. I'm just give you 
some some tips i already told you that we need to respond to every comment every suggestion and you will automatically face there are few comments few suggestions are not really acceptable or meaningful but your reply should be very polite and graceful you may write to the editor in chief but you are responding to a reviewer so it should be polite and graceful and do not use any word which indicates that the reviewer is wrong or reviewer is stupid never do but you should write in a different way so i'm i'm showing few examples in three different colors i have shown three examples so hopefully you are uh, trying to keep the snapshots of the screen so you can keep it so the sentence may be like this that it might be due to some misunderstanding or the reviewer might have overlooked however we are trying to revise or address this in an elaborate way actually you are trying to do something but you are actually not doing something so in this way if the if the comment carries no meaning so you'll have to deal it in very carefully or in this point we beg to differ absolutely when you are not accepting it we beg to differ uh, we are confident enough so it is very strong that the authors are very confident and they are not accepting the reviewer statement sometimes it happens or a, a different mild way you can write that yes we understand the point raised by the reviewer but we still believe that that also makes sense that you are not going to accept what reviewer said so there's a different ways to tell that you are not very comfortable with uh, accepting this reviewer's comments so these are the normal normal things so you will you will learn with your as you your time goes you grow so submit your revision and wait for the happy moment that your paper is accepted okay so i am not getting feedback directly so uh, yeah so uh, puni puni yeah thank yes sir thank you so it was a really wonderful so it is exactly 1 hour 30 minutes i hope minutes. i am audible sir uh, punit 1 hour 30 minutes i have covered and now uh, is is it we can go for some question answering yes sir so thank you very much sir and you can see already dr rao has joined you as a panelist yeah, yeah. So yeah he, that's that's why i mentioned that it it it, it will it will be very boring to him <laughs> no, no no but he is continuously in touch with me in whatsapp and he is telling it is really excellent so that's why i he wanted to join this session then i sent him this link and then my he honor, could join my us honor online because i i know it is in the morning it he is from los angeles so yeah the time is probably morning right around 6 o'clock or 6 to 7 5:30. Mm. Yeah. My God. <laughs> 5:30. <laughs> yeah. So you have good. Comments? So thank you very much, sir. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Rao, you want to comment anything? We will take first your comments, then I will summarize it. Uh. Yeah. Sure. so yeah it is about 5:30 i started so i think it's uh, it's uh, i think i initially i thought i was skeptical whether to participate or not but i think this is uh, two hours i think most useful uh, 
time uh, I've spent. I think I learned something from uh, your presentation. <laughs> it's very excellent. Uh, I think probably I attended uh, several WebEx in the COVID-19. And this, I would say, is the, the best uh, uh, presentation I sort of heard and uh, most useful to mostly even myself and also mostly to the younger uh, people who want to write the paper. I think you have covered all the points, but I have few noted some few points. I want to sort of get your opinion. I think uh, it's mostly the information I think uh, need to give to the young students. So yeah. I think the writing the paper is very important for researchers and uh, if you're doing MS or uh, PhD or even for professionals because uh, it will put you in an international level uh, as, uh, as an author. So what people do is they have, uh, have been the associate editor for uh, several years. So I know the experience. I think a lot of people write, uh, uh, write papers, but uh, they get uh, unhappy when rejected. But uh, a rule of thumb is don't write the paper if you are not ready. So it's all, you are the best judge of your work and make sure that uh, you're ready to write a paper. And if you are not ready, then uh, don't write a paper. Second thing I think uh, uh, Professor Guha highlighted is uh, abstract and uh, conclusions are the key. So abstract should uh, very briefly say what are the novelty about your paper because that's one of the criteria the paper is being judged. So, and your paper should uh, follow what you say in the abstract. So nothing more, nothing less. So of course the abstract is very brief. So you substantiate in your paper, the results by saying that, okay, this is a normal thing. It has wide bandwidth or uh, compared to previous literature, et cetera. So you need to just follow the abstract and uh, address uh, in a more detailed way uh, uh, in, in the paper. Uh, about 45% of the papers are uh, currently accepted uh, in the IEEE, so which is very good chance. One in roughly two papers will get accepted, but uh, you have to be uh, right in a way, like Professor Goha mentioned very clearly, how to write a paper and uh, how to sort of highlight your, uh, your work in a concise way. Because most of the papers you see, sometimes you have about 15 pages, 16 pages, and I'm sure that uh, reviewers get bored. So be concise and they don't exceed. Uh, I think the short papers have a better chance of uh, getting accepted. So other point I want to mention is you decide yourself whether it is a communication or a full paper. So if it is a communication, communication limit your paper to four to five pages not more than that. And if it is a full paper you want to present, I think uh, don't exceed about uh, nine or 10 pages. So I think that's uh, be concise as much as possible. And uh, and like uh, Professor Goha said, they don't get disappointed if it is rejected. Generally, I think you will have uh, either accept. So it's not uh, very common that uh, on the first trial itself, your paper is accepted. That's probably less than 2%. And most of them fall in the category, either minor revisions or major revisions or uh, reject. So if it is minor and major, I think that's, that's actually a good thing. So that also gives you a chance to see what the reviewers are saying and you can improve uh, on your uh, paper itself. I think sometimes uh, revisions are uh, better than uh, getting accepted in the first shot. So because you you can improve your paper based on uh, previous comments. Um, I think that's all I have. I think uh, finally I want to say that uh, uh, spend sufficient time on the paper. Don't hurry to submit the paper and get your uh, peers also review the paper and give their comments before you submit. So I think that's all I have and uh, I'll let the other people to panelists to comment on or give additional tips to the uh, uh, attendees. Thanks again, uh, Professor Guru and uh, Puneet uh, for making this happen. I think this is the most useful two hours I spent and I learned a few things. So 
Elsa trading anyway. <laughs> no, I, I I have some some comments on your comments that you have rightly pointed out few things I missed out. Uh, and uh, really, the paper not be too lengthy. I already told, and uh, there's a page size, page length this is given in the. In the uh, always uh, the very compact paper always has a chance to be accepted and is rightly mentioned that I at the beginning I told that uh, if you feel comfortable if you are confident about your work that is publishable in that journal or in IEEE transactions then only you can write so all your efforts what you are giving for writing paper that is the additional thing, but the, the main content of the work should be solid, original, and worth publishing. So finally, it will be justified uh, by, you will have to justify, and it, that is to be verified by the reviewers. And uh, rejected, there are mainly three categories, Dr. Rao right, rightly indicated to you. Either it will be rejected or revisions. There are two categories. One is major revision and minor revision. Minor revision means it is almost accepted with minor comments and uh, IEEE AP transactions, particularly one transaction uh, statistics I know in a year it is maximum hardly one or two accepted as minor revision. So most cases this major revision. So major revision is actually means the revision and you'll have to queries, questions, comments. So Dr. Rao has indicated some some more additional points for for the attendees. Thank you. Thank you for your pre presence particularly. Yeah, in the early morning, but you got a cup of tea, I, I, I saw. Yes, I, I <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to be sharp and I have to be awake, so I have to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank yes. you, Professor Guha, and thank you, Dr. Rao, for uh, joining us on this very, very wonderful session. And I'm getting a lot of positive feedback in the chat window as well as on my WhatsApp message. And uh, we are thankful to Professor Guha that he has started his presentation and not ended at the point where uh, paper are being submitted and you wait for the results. Because most of the presentations on paper writing will end there. But the most important thing is once paper is being submitted and it is reviewed and rejected, which Dr. Rao has rightly said that 98% time it is going to be rejected or minor revision or major revision, then the real story starts because first time writing the paper is somewhat okay and people are very very enthusiastic in writing those papers however the moment they see there is a revision or a rejection their full uh, passion and enthusiasm goes to i can say 10 db down but the real story starts there and they have to really work on that point and then if they are uh, submitting all the points raised by the reviewers, they are incorporating in those papers, they are improving the paper, then the second time chances of getting is accepted is really high and as high as 70% time it is going to be accepted. So I like that portion where you have not ended your presentation once paper is submitted then wait for the results. However, you continued and you have given very, very important information how one should write the remarks given by uh, whether it is a rebuttal or you are updating the papers or you are enhancing the paper. So those things are really very important and which uh, most of the people don't know. But those things are going to make the real change in the acceptance or rejections of those papers. So thank you, thank you very much. And we are really honored to have two, two associate editors in one single webinar and <laughs> providing all this uh, very, very informative information. And just to inform you, we have touched 1000 plus uh, attendees uh, marks 
and uh, so you can see that how important it is and we are having lot of questions in the q and a sessions or if you agree and if you have time i would like to take a uh, few questions so that you can answer them yes yes puneet i will be happy thank you and sir if it is really if it is really going to help them then then it is worth otherwise uh, it is just a kind of one way talking so i i hope a uh, few few are really really very serious and they are they are interested okay so i'm happy to address their questions yeah so first question i can see sir here from bhaskar he is asking what is writing uh, 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 how to write a paper for ieee letters so he wants to know the difference between transaction and letters oh okay okay so that is a good question i'm going to address next next question you give me at least two three questions together okay so what are the standards quality what type of work acceptable and how much percentage results i think this is already being answered uh, okay then really, very very yeah. relevant very relevant question okay so i'm trying to address this too yes, the second second question has a huge perspective and it is very important so yeah. i'm addressing second question first okay. that which work i i can write and how do i know that my work is really good or bad so there are two things one is based on your experience that's why we need one supervisor so during that period when you are doing phd so it is a kind of training you will be exposed to this world and you will be able to understand the quality of work and which quality of work is going to be published in which journal that is essential if we don't have this experience it is a kind of experience and you can gather is over 5 6 years of time so if you don't have you contact you show your work and uh, i am to do in my field i am to do for my for my many friends colleagues collaborator so i to i am to do so just take their suggestion that this work is good for i triple journal or not but here is one question the self filtering is not a good idea you yourself cannot if you cannot judge you take other other self or real expert self if you alone just judge it though no my work is not publishable this is not right thing because sometimes you may do mistake and you you may lose chance to to publish your paper in top journals so self filtering is not a good idea try to judge it that your work is really or you can just try once submit submit you prepare and submit to transaction and try and and see what kind of feedback or what kind of comments you are getting so rejection is a part of this part of the game so by this way you yourself you will understand that which work is really publishable and which is not and also i am coming to <coughs> to later that is short paper there are there are three categories i am telling you one is exclusively letter another is paper and short paper paper means full paper full paper is a complete work and elaborate work short papers basic idea is to extend some work towards the development that is you have developed some new concept or you have improved some technique so for this it will be limited to 3 4 to 5 pages so that will be considered as a short paper even the full five page length but it's it will be different that is the completeness or newness of the work that is novelty of the work of different type and those works will go as full paper and for later later we'll see the particularly it is not always followed but the basic idea is that how contemporary it is that is how important it is to be published first and 
how contemporary, how state of the art status the based on that it is decided is going to letter or or uh, full journal but sharp demarcation is very difficult to give so you'll have to decide if it is a traditional work and kind of extension of work the improvement type of work then definitely it is better to go for sh short paper not as letter in later the novelty of the work idea of the work and its relevance of the work that is important yeah thank you sir so next question is please point out the common mistakes due to which even good ideas end up getting rejected in the research paper oh good question <clears throat> the, my answer is just in one sentence that it is not put in in proper way that means it is your fault you you could not present the work or you could not present uh, or you, you could not convince the reviewer that your work is novel so it is your duty it is not reviewers duty to find out the novelty it is your duty to cater the novelty or expose the novelty or highlight the novelty of the work and convince them so it is the writing of the paper in a proper way that's why writing is very important so your work is important and this work will go to the international community through top journals that is also your responsibility and it is your duty to put in proper way Thank you, sir. Now, next question is, shouldn't one decide the title based on the content in the paper? Shouldn't the title highlight the paper? I, I cannot get the question. Should not one decide the title based on the content in the paper? Of course, it is the content of the paper. Yes. Title is the abstract of the abstract. So that by by reading the title, I can understand what is inside the paper or what is the basic focus of the work. Yeah, so that you have already told in the presentation itself. Yes. So that's why I am not taking it again. And now next question is what is the difference between the critical review and a systematic review? Okay, so they want to know this critical, critical review and systematic review. <laughs> no, I have not uh, used this term systematic review. It is systematic writing. Yeah, systematic writing. That is, the, when you are uh, when you are writing, telling the story or writing your work has to be presented in a systematic way, not in a haphazard way. So that a reader or a reviewer can easily follow what you want to say. I did not tell anything about critical review. Review is always critical. writing should be systematic yeah so next question is sir uh, from uh, should the number of figures be restricted or it should go to any extent i received a comment in a paper to make number of figures should be less than 10 or 12 in a full length article well it is a very interesting question Sometimes we cannot restrict ourselves. We increase the number of figures. Sometimes numbers of number of figures is important. Some figures are really important. So you'll have to make a balance. And if your fee number of figures is too high, then obviously your writing space will be less. 
so your text sufficient text should be there to to discuss the results sometimes you can you better do i i understand your point you generate the results you do all sorts of studies you keep it with you but don't don't that's why we always try to write or try to indicate that only representative results have been furnished not all results no author can write no author can give all his results so it is the representative results and if it is really important to tell about the other results you just mention about the results in the text don't put as results yes so you have to you yes. have to judge and you have to choose that which figures i am going to put as figures and which results or their content i am just going to discuss in text then you can solve your problem thank you sir now yes. we will go to the next question yes question is in many research we does not have enough experimental analysis my question is can we verify and validate our finding by other means like theoretical ways uh, i don't understand it is from uh, from which branch the question is probably from computer science where algorithm based so in that case or there are many areas where experiments directly or elaborate experiments are not possible well in that case you need to tell you have to anyhow you have to verify your results right so either based on some theoretical basis or some additional simulators or anyone's available data earlier published data so any kind of validation tool you need to find out and compare with your results not for the for the whole uh, uh, results or whole studies but at least some testing so that you can do it is a kind of validation that your work your prediction is correct yes true very true now we will go to quickly next question sir he is asking how to distinguish to write about the work in abstract introduction and conclusion so that it would not look like repetitive statements yeah so again again you write the question i read the question how to distinguish to write about the work in abstract introduction and conclusion so that it would not look like a repetitive statement okay 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 i think he's he's absolutely novice the very young student someone has said okay so uh, you you might have followed that i have told that first you write introduction introduction means you are going to introduce your work so in your field you try to read some standard papers at least 10 and their introductions you have to give time there is no shortcut then you can find the, what should be the format of introduction what to be written that you write okay in the abstract you will write only about the significant part only about the significant part of your work it is the it is the summary of the work abstract of the work where you are not going to refer to any previous works okay in introduction we start with previous works but in abstract we directly hit we have done this or this work works or this work investigates this 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 is the novelty this is the result that's all so writing introduction is is very very special very tricky so you'll have to learn in your own field but abstract means it is your work only and the last sentence will tell about the significance and significant observation of your work which is important and it is it has to be quantitative 
it is it is it is uh, saving time it is fast if it is fast by how many minutes how many seconds or if it is a if it's a, if it is an antenna then it is the, the gain is high x db y db so this this type of parametric value you'll have to tell so abstract and introduction those are fine conclusion in conclusion after the when your work is done then you will write your concluding remarks. What you wrote up to this, it's abstract or summary part you already have told in, in abstract. So that unt untold part, if you have any, you start from that, that this work has been done carefully and giving this result, but unfortunately you could not address this, this part because of the shortage of this, this, this. Anyway, we believe that this work will be applicable to this, this, this part. So this type of statement is very important. Your honest confession, not only your strength, the weakness, your limitation, all this related work, if you, if you want to share with others, that you can tell. There is no scope of writing this type of statement in any part of the paper. So it is your own domain. Next question. Next question. Yeah, I was on mute. <laughs> so I will. <laughs> yeah. Next so many question. times when we implemented others work, we are not able to reproduce the same results. What are your views on this? Mm. Well, so it is a it is a tricky thing. If you want to compare your results with their results, their graph, then it is really difficult. Somehow you'll have to extract either manually or nowadays there are several uh, techniques by which you can uh, extract the raw data. Or in a table, you can compare just by manual reading these values. This is the X, Y, what, what are the different parameters? You just note and compare with yours. Direct reproduction is not possible. You'll have to extract the data. And when you are comparing this, you will have to refer to that it is from this reference. That is, that is acceptable. Yeah, another very, very interesting question is being asked. Yes, yes. Is yes. it recommended to use the graphical abstract, he's asking. Graphical abstract means, I cannot uh, get his question. So he's asking whether it is recommended to use the graphical as abstract, means using graphs. No, no, no. In abstract, abstract is just the text. Yeah. Abstract is just the, just the text. <laughs> no graphical extract is possible. Yeah, I am seeing lots of questions on being asked on review papers. So, sir, can you just elaborate on review papers and what should be included and how it should be written? I have left almost four or five questions, but again, it is repeatedly being asked. So, I thought that okay. Yeah, so, so, regarding review paper, I am telling one thing that review paper is normally written by top experts and the person who is going to write a review paper he or she definitely has that expertise so this this question will not come from them so i think it is coming from the students who are trying to write some review papers uh, i won't encourage any any novice or the beginners to write a review paper if you write a review paper, definitely you will have some big boss with you. So he or she may guide you how to write the review paper. I'm not commenting on review paper. Review paper is totally different thing. I'm just now talking about how you represent your work for the top journal, your own contribution or original contribution. Yeah, so sir, we have already reached eight o'clock. Uh, we will take only one or two more questions and we will end the session because I know 
you are waiting to go i have a, I, I have a question the puneet are they are they are they satisfied or they have some uh, any any confusion in their remarks what is the essence actually yeah no yes. so most of the people they have written the session is very very excellent and it is very useful for them and most of the time beginners they have told that now they can understand how to write paper and they can start writing and they are very sure that they will be able to publish paper in near future so that is the most important uh, feedback i am getting from i am i am i'm very very uh, happy to interact with you with the with the big group of new researchers enthusiastic researchers so i'll conclude just by telling my personal experience that uh, why this type of presentation I had to prepare, it is on pressure. And I did not know about this. Uh, some point of time, a few years ago, one national institute of engineering somehow pressed me to come and to give such, such a talk. And uh, I, based on my experience, what I'm telling, it is just an extended part of that one. I prepared and I flew to that part, that uh, uh, institute, and it is after, it is the working day, so after the classes are over, are over, it is a long session for two and a half hours. Then one, then uh, just, there is a huge introduction, mainly all faculty members, teachers and professors, few students. A few professors and lady professors, they came with their some problems and showed me the hard copies. And the personality we talked, first, first round is the overall discussion, presentation, this and that. Then one-to-one -one discussions, and they were facing some problems. And particularly, Puneet, you have rightly pointed out that most important for the uh, experienced person is the second part. For the newcomers, the first part is more important than the second part. But those who are experienced, the second part is more vital. Anyway, so they, they discussed, and I gave some tips that you'll have to write in this way reply revision this and that so i again in the morning they came and uh, i i showed i read so with patience i did this thing just after a few months i got an email with a copy of paper published in uh, ieee transaction i'm not naming the, the, the particular transaction not in my field it is another domain of electronics so one lady, lady professor, she was very over, overwhelming response and uh, mail later. So after a couple of years, when I visited the same institute, not only that lady, she showed two more papers published in, uh, it is probably electron device, I, I remember. And along with that, additional three professors came there published to work in IEEE journal. So publishing in a journal, that is a bottleneck, that is the, the things to be followed. And when they recognize that, that they followed the, my experience actually, not my talk, I shared my experience and they became successful. So I'm telling all of you that definitely you'll be successful. It is, it is not like some kind of, um, verdict or some kind of statements. What I told it is based on my experience, my painful experience rather. Yes, sir. Thank best you. Wishes. My very best wishes to all of you, to all of yeah. you, although we cannot see each other. So only one sided. And I'm yeah. very grateful to Dr. Rao in such a senior person and the, the world renowned expert and uh, mentor too. Is very passionate researcher, and he was present in the morning in, in Los Angeles, and it was 5:30 morning. Amazing! Yeah. I'm I'm really honored and encouraged. Yeah. So after seeing both of you, I switched off my video so that it should not look odd 
<laughs> that two <laughs> two world renowned okay. persons and in also there so that's why i switched off my video for the time being no point i i appreciate your effort and your help for the, the young people the true passionate researchers my very best wishes for all of you yeah just i will conclude sir i have already received a few comments one wonderful uh, comment is there definitely sir we are going to publish papers very soon and send you the copy that type very of good. comment is already there very good very good and at ieee bangalore section we firmly believe that we as indian we are having lot of potential only thing we are not getting the right platform and guidance so since last several weeks we are trying to organize this type webinar we where we can bring experts like you who has uh, devoted their life for uh, organizing as well as writing this kind of papers and when we get the experts like you the kind of experience which you share is tremendous and really helpful for our members so thank you very much sir on, beh on behalf of ieee bangalore section as well as on my own behalf we are thankful to you for sharing your expertise knowledge and time most importantly time and i am also very thankful to dr rao who without any invitation he got somehow this information <laughs> and voluntarily joined us and provided his uh, perspective thank you thank you very much sir and at the end not, last but not the least to the all the participants so i can see there are still more than 800 participants attending this uh, webinar at the, uh, so thank you very much to all of you for joining thank us. you yeah thank you sir thank you very much thank and we we'll today if you are having any questions please write to me i will forward your questions to professor guha and he will be more than happy to answer this if you have missed any part of this uh, presentation don't worry we have recorded this presentation and it will be available to the ieee bangalore section youtube channel you can visit our youtube channel and see again repeatedly n number of times this presentation so all your problems oh sir thank you thank you very much see you tomorrow at 7 pm with new expert on a new topic very soon thank you have a good day and good night thank you thank you sir thank you dr for you a good day that's why i told a good day and a good night <laughs> so people right. <laughs> in us <laughs> there is a good day and uh, part uh, from uh, south asia and japan because i can see people from japan and indonesia they have also joined this session so whole globe so good night and good day thank you sir thank you very thank much you.